Hi, I'm Dr. Daniel Manziak, orthopaedic surgeon. Proceeding with a total knee replacement is a major decision. This should be based on the pain the knee is causing and the impact it's having on your life. I've made this educational video as I think it's extremely important for a patient to make an informed decision to obtain a good outcome from surgery. I've divided this talk up into what you can expect before, during and after surgery, including potential risks. Before surgery, we'll discuss your medical history. I'll examine your leg, look at any x-rays and scans that you've had, and then we'll discuss your treatment options. In the lead up to surgery, you'll require blood tests, an ECG tracing of your heart, an anaesthetic appointment, and you may require further scans of the knee. You need to make sure that you're healthy, motivated and ready for surgery. This includes treating any dental problems and sorting out any infections or illnesses so that you're as healthy as you can be before surgery. You also need to make sure that you have help arranged with meals and transport. The national recommendation currently is that you should not drive for at least four weeks after a knee replacement, but if it's your right knee, it's often closer to six weeks as that's the breaking leg. Patients are generally admitted to hospital and have their surgery on the same day. Once you've had your anaesthetic, I'll make an incision straight down the front of your knee. The basic principle of a knee replacement is to remove the damaged cartilage and place a new metal surface on the end of the femur and the top of the tibia with a polyethylene bearing in the middle which takes the friction. You may also need a new surface on the cartilage of your kneecap. You'll have dissolving stitches and a waterproof dressing which stays intact for at least two weeks and allows you to have a shower. After surgery, you'll be transferred to the recovery room for one to two hours. You will have an intravenous drip for fluids and antibiotics to help prevent infection and pneumatic pumps on your feet to help prevent blood clots. You'll then be transferred to the orthopedic ward and when your anaesthetic is worn off, we'll encourage you to get up with the physiotherapists and nurses. You use a four leg walking frame first as this is safest and then you move on to a walking stick when the physiotherapist thinks you're ready, usually a few days later. Some discomfort or pain is expected after a knee replacement of course and it's true that this can be quite a sore and challenging operation. For the first day, your knee is often quite numb from the anaesthetic, but this will then wear off. We manage your pain with regular ice packs to the knee and a variety of tablets. Weaker tablets given regularly in the background and then stronger ones on top of that as required. For a knee replacement, I often say to the patients they should aim for a pain score of about four out of 10. So this is a manageable ache and still allows them to do what they need to do. We also aim to minimise the number of opioids or morphine derivatives that you take, as these often have undesirable side effects such as nausea, confusion, drowsiness and constipation, as well as being strong addictive drugs. Some swelling is also perfectly normal after knee replacement. Usually this peaks around day three after surgery and your knee will swell up quite impressively over this time. It will then take many months to go down. The swelling goes right down the leg due to gravity throughout the day. So patients often find that in the afternoon or evening, they have quite significant ankle swelling for many months and this slowly goes away with time. We usually anticipate around three or four nights in hospital for a standard knee replacement. You can go home when you're eating, drinking, toileting and getting in and out of bed yourself. And when we all agree that you're safe to go home. For a knee replacement, it's also particularly important you are able to fully straighten the knee and bend to at least 90 degrees before you go home. And then once you go home, you need to be able to maintain this. It is best that you go home when you're ready and don't stay longer than needed, as in the comfort of your own home, you'll eat better, sleep better, and you're out of a hospital that's full of sick people. It's important that you come in with the right mindset and motivation. When you come into hospital for a knee replacement, you are not a sick patient. You're there to improve your knee function and mobility, and so that's what you need to practise. In the operating theatre, I'll make sure your knee has full motion, but after that, it's up to you to do the rehab properly. Most people can go straight home from hospital. Occasionally, people need to go to a rehab facility, but this is usually only if they live alone or if they're particularly weak or stiff beforehand. After you go home from hospital, you need to see your local physiotherapist at least once or twice a week to make sure that you're doing your rehab properly and maintaining adequate motion. Once again, I'd like to reiterate that the entire focus of the early rehab after a knee replacement is being able to fully straighten your knee and bend to at least 90 degrees. Strengthening often comes months later and is not the early focus. You can stop using a walking stick when you no longer have a limp. And it's not a race to see who can get rid of their stick the quickest. 
you'll routinely see me at two weeks after surgery and six weeks after surgery with an x-ray before the six week appointment. Knee replacements are generally very successful operations with the benefits of pain relief and functional improvement. However, all procedures have small risks. An anaesthetic has a small risk and it's worth discussing this with the anaesthetist at a preoperative appointment. Specific for the knee, there is a small chance of infection in the joint. This is about one in 100 risk and it's very hard to treat. It may require further surgery or multiple surgeries to help eradicate an infection. Everyone loses a small amount of blood in surgery, but it's very rare to need a blood transfusion. Blood clots in the veins of the leg, DVTs, or in the lung are a small risk of surgery and are minimised through using pneumatic pumps on your feet, blood thinners, and encouraging early mobility. Stiffness is another risk specific to knee replacement. It's extremely important to keep the knee moving from fully straight to at least 90 degrees early on. And those patients who are very stiff beforehand are often the ones who struggle the most, so they have to work the hardest. Other rare complications include damage to nerves and blood vessels around the knee or fracture of the bone. Some numbness around the scar is however very common. All patients notice a small numb patch just on the outside edge of the scar, which is present forever, but does shrink in slowly from where it starts out. In terms of longevity, the vast majority of knee replacements now last more than 15 years. They can be redone, but the second time is always harder. Lastly, some ongoing aches and pains around the knee are always possible. When we replace the surface of the joint, we're not replacing the muscles and tendons and other structures around the knee. So it is quite possible that you suffer muscular strains or tendonitis in future. People often ask how long a full recovery takes after a total knee replacement. The truth is it takes a long time and there's a lot of variation among individuals. People are usually feeling pretty good about their knee six to 12 weeks after surgery, but a full recovery can take one or even two years. And this depends a lot on how bad the knee is at the start. If you have any further questions, please ask me in our consultation or bring a family member if you think that would help. In the meantime, please feel free to give my office a call.